the midst of a block road, with trains roaring by. A woman wearing a conspiracy smile walks toward a man who is lying on the ground wearing only his underwear. She is Bok Soon, a legendary assassin known for her fast, ruthless, and precise skills. However, rather than abruptly ending the man's life, Bok Soon expresses her belief in justice, a value she had previously discussed with her daughter Jay Yang when they came across news about a senator denying allegations of fraudulent college admissions for his son. In order to level the playing field, Bok Soon offers the man a sword to defend himself, while she opts to fight solely with a hatchet. Oda taunts her for overestimating herself and swings his sword with unwavering determination. A violent clash erupts between the two adept warriors. However, as Bok Soon realizes the near impossibility of winning in close quarters combat, she proposes changing her weapon. She swiftly returns to her car, retrieves a gun, and fires a shot at Oda, bringing the battle to an unexpected end. As a renowned assassin, Bok Soon carries another identity, that of a single mother with a 17-year-old teenager waiting for her at home. On this particular night, after completing her mission, she arrives back to find that her daughter, Jae Young, has been hiding cigarettes. The sight of the cigar box triggers memories of Bok Soon's own troubled past when her abusive father caught her smoking and cruelly forced her to eat a cigarette. When Jae Young returns home, Bok Soon goes through various scenarios in her mind. Seeing that they all end in arguments, she decides not to scold her daughter, as their relationship is already tense and awkward. Up until now, Jae Yang remains unaware of her mother's secret life, knowing only that she works for a company that keeps her away from home for long hours and causes her frequent absences. Even at school, other parents are curious about Bok Soon's occupation and mock her for not being a good role model for her daughter. Despite facing such scrutiny, she is forced to maintain silence and conceal the truth about her double life. The following day, news of Oda's death flashes across the television screen. Min Q, the CEO of MK Company and Bok Soon's employer, expresses satisfaction at witnessing her flawless execution of the task. However, Min Q's sister, Min Yi, becomes consumed by jealousy and anger. She is aware that Bok Soon holds a special place in her brother's heart and receives more attention from him. During her gathering with her fellow assassins, Bok Soon's impressive killing prowess and her esteemed status as a top-notch Class A assassin earned her their admiration. As the conversation progresses, they delve into discussing the three rules instilled by Min Q, never target minors, strictly adhere to sanctioned missions, and always ensure the successful completion of assigned tasks. Disobeying any of these rules would result in certain death. The weight of these rules, coupled with the self-pity of her companions, begins to overwhelm Bok Soon, and she, too, succumbs to a sea of negative emotions. To avoid further embarrassment, Bok Soon makes the decision to leave the gathering early. On her way back, she encounters a group of thugs who insult her and inspect her car. Bok Soon retaliates with her own insults, but before the situation escalates, one of her fellow assassins, He Sung, steps in and swiftly defeats the thugs. He Sung possesses an equal level of skill in killing his Bok Soon. Still, his strained relationship with the CEO prevents him from attaining the coveted Class A status. Following the encounter, Bok Soon and He Sung spend the night together. Once they have finished their activities, Bok Soon presents his son with a check to cover his father's medical expenses, an action that deeply wounds his pride. On the other hand, Bok Soon's daughter, Jae Yang, is having a secret meeting with her girlfriend, So Ra. The two girls have kept their relationship underground, knowing their mothers will not approve of their preferences. However, their intimate moment is interrupted by a group of classmates, almost catching them in the act. Jae Yang also turns down one of the boys, Chio Wu's invitation for KTV, which angers him and leads him to seek revenge later. The next day, after dropping off Jae Yang at school, Bok Soon proceeds to visit the MK office to meet with Min Kyu. However, her path is intercepted by Min Yi, who whisks her away for a special activity. They arrive at a dimly lit restroom, where a teenage girl named Yang Ji initiates an attack, sparking a fierce fight. Unbeknownst to Bok Soon, this altercation is actually a training exercise at the Assassin Academy. Bok Soon, who only seeks to leave the fight and proceed with her original purpose of meeting Min Kyu, finds herself persuaded by Min Hee to engage in training with Yang Ji, who happens to be her biggest admirer. Armed with a wooden knife, Yang Ji displays a clever maneuver. But Bok Soon swiftly counters, killing her with a red marker in a skillful move. 
Amidst the applause and admiration of her fellow trainees, Bok Soon finally gets the chance to meet with Min Kyu. He presents her with a choice between two envelopes, each containing a mission. As expected, Bok Soon selects the one that will take place within South Korea. However, her joy turns to apprehension when she realizes that her target is a young boy. To her surprise, Min Kyu corrects her, revealing that the boy is of legal age. During their conversation, Bok Soon seizes the opportunity to remind Min Kyu that her contract is nearing its end and expresses her intention to retire. However, Min Kyu's response remains ambiguous, offering no clear agreement or disagreement. Their meeting is abruptly interrupted when Bok Soon receives a school call informing her that Jae Young has stabbed Chiol Wu. Bok Soon rushes to the school and learns that her daughter is at risk of getting expelled for not providing a reason for the attack on Chiol Wu. Bok Soon confronts Jae Young, demanding an explanation, but her daughter simply admits she wanted to kill the boy. The conversation leaves Bok Soon speechless and she becomes extremely worried about her daughter. Later, Bok Soon confides in Lee Sung and expresses her concerns about her distant relationship with Jae Young. She worries that her daughter is becoming too much like her, as her childhood is also abusive due to her father. Meanwhile, the leaders of various assassin companies affiliated with MK gather for a crucial meeting. During the discussion, they come across evidence of an unauthorized assassination and suspect that one of their employees may be responsible. Min Kyu, the CEO, assures everyone that he will not hesitate to eliminate the individual if the allegations prove true. Little do they know that Min He, driven by her ulterior motives, has orchestrated this plan to eliminate Bok Soon and gain Min Kyu's undivided attention for herself. Meanwhile, at home, Bok Soon persists in her attempts to communicate with Jae Yang, desperately seeking to understand the motivations behind her daughter's actions. However, Jae Yang continues to ignore her, adding to Bok Soon's distress and sense of helplessness. Overwhelmed by her daughter's indifferent attitude, Bok Soon finds herself emotionally broken. In the face of Bok Soon's emotional distress, Min Kyu extends his comforting reassurance, urging her to give Jae Yang more time and to be patient. Also, he assigns Yang Ji to be Bok Soon's partner for murdering the kid in the upcoming mission. Later that evening, they secretly enter the victim's apartment and incapacitate him, intending to stage his death as a suicide. However, as Bok Soon looks at the person before her, she realizes that he is the son of the senator, the very person his father wants to eliminate to conceal a scandal. At that moment, Bok Soon's resolve wavers. She finds herself torn between her mission and her empathy for the young man. Just as she is caught in this internal struggle, a voicemail notification interrupts her thoughts. It's a message from Jae Yan expressing her apologies for everything that has transpired. Upon hearing her daughter's heartfelt confession, Bok Soon's heart fills with compassion. She realizes that she cannot bring herself to carry out the assassination of the young man simply because his father is trying to hide his own shame. Determined to break the cycle, she makes a difficult decision and contacts Min Kyu to confess her mistake and failure in the mission. To strengthen their fabricated story, Bok Soon convinces Yang Ji to admit her own mistakes, making it more convincing to everyone. However, Min Kai points out that Bok Soon has broken the rules in order to protect the innocent boy from being targeted and killed again. Bok Soon proposes a deal, extending her contract with MK instead of retiring. Reluctantly, Min Kyu accepts the terms. Returning home, Bok Soon finds Jae Yang seemingly asleep. However, Jae Yang is pretending all along, and she is desperate for comfort and support, feeling abandoned by So Ra, who is not responding to her messages. The next day, Min Kyu contacts Min Hee and issues a directive to close the senator's case. Despite any potential harm it may cause to the company's reputation, this decision further fuels Min Hee's resentment towards Bok Soon, as she perceives Min Kyu's favoritism towards her. Driven by her growing thirst for revenge, Min Hee approaches Lee Song, urging him to complete Bok Soon's failed mission. Recognizing the opportunity to ascend to the prestigious Class A rank and secure funds for his father's treatment, Lee Sung readily accepts the task. He understands that accomplishing this mission successfully would satisfy Min Hee's desire for vengeance and serve as a means to advance his own standing within the organization. Finally, Jae Yan summons her courage to confess the truth behind her violent act. It's the time that Bok Soon knows her daughter is blackmailed for her preference for girls. Bok Soon struggles with Jae Yan's revelation and questions her if it's just confusion, which hurts the girl deep inside. Their conversation is interrupted by a surprise visit from Yang Ji. Once again, 
Bok Soon prioritizes her work over her daughter and leaves with Yang Ji. Yang Ji has been fired for failing to cover for Bok Soon. Upon hearing it, Bok Soon brings her to meet up with her fellow hitmen. However, everyone is congratulating Yi Sung on his promotion to rank A at the bar, leaving Bok Soon wondering. Shortly after, when they are watching the news on the bar's television, Bok Soon realizes the young man's death and pieces together what happened. Before she can scold Yi Sung, Min he calls, insisting that Bok Soon put her on speaker. In a shocking turn of events, Min he seizes the opportunity and offers an impromptu mission to anyone present who can eliminate Bok Soon, promising a promotion to Class A as a reward. This sudden announcement ignites a brutal fight, with chaos erupting in the bar. Even the bar owner becomes involved, adding to the intensity of the conflict. To Bok Soon's surprise, she finds an unexpected ally in Yang Ji who stands by her side and fights alongside her, swiftly neutralizing each attacker. Together, they navigate the fierce confrontation, relying on their skills and determination to overcome the onslaught. Afterward, Bok Soon calls the cleaning crew and questions Yang Ji about her unexpected assistance. Yang Ji confesses that her motive was pure survival, and she believed Bok Soon had a better chance of winning. Just as Bok Soon receives a call from Jae Yang, Min Q storms into the scene and forcefully pushes her against the wall. His anger palpable. He is furious about Bok Soon's actions that violated the rules and could have severe repercussions for her and the other leaders involved. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Bok Soon knows she cannot allow Jae Yan to hear the impending confrontation. In a swift and decisive move, Min Q takes action and destroys the phone, preventing their conversation from being overheard. Suddenly, Yang Ji interrupts and reveals that Min He gave the orders for the hit. Tensions rise as Min Q asks Bok Soon to come to the office the next day to renew her contract for her own protection. Bok Soon initially refuses, knowing that accepting the renewal means a loss of respect and a fight. But when she calculates the outcome, she realizes she has no choice but to accept the renewal. After Bok Soon leaves, Min Q asks Yang Ji to keep their conversation a secret. Back at home, Jae Yang confronts her mother for not answering her calls and shares the heartbreaking news that So R.A. has broken up with her and is denying her true feelings for girls. Bok Soon apologizes for her earlier reaction and reassures Jae Yang that she can be open about her identity without fear of judgment. Overwhelmed by the events of the day, Bok Soon breaks down, and Jae Yang realizes that her mother has also had a difficult day at work. They find solace in each other's struggles, and although Bok Soon doesn't reveal all the details, Jae Yang mentions discovering a gun and a fake passport in her mother's bag. Bok Soon, wanting to feel closer to her daughter, doesn't deny the possibility that she's CIA. The following day, the company bosses gather for a meeting to discuss the recent killings of their members. Suspecting Min Q's involvement, Min Q defends himself, claiming that Bok Soon acted in self-defense and offers compensation as a gesture of reconciliation. However, some bosses remain skeptical and demand that Min Q handle the situation according to the established rules, even going so far as to hand him a blade. Defying their expectations, Min Q shocks everyone by killing one of the bosses right on the table, displaying his authority and reminding them that he is the ultimate authority in their world. He introduces a new rule, no weapons allowed during their meetings. Meanwhile, Bok Soon arrives at the office to sign the contract but is surprised to find Min He waiting for her. In a shocking revelation, Min He confesses that Min Q killed Yang Ji after she left their previous encounter. Overwhelmed with anger and grief, Bok Soon retaliates by using a pen to kill Min He, leaving it as a symbolic message for Min Q that she challenges him to a duel. In the evening, Bok Soon shares a warm and intimate dinner with Jae Yang, cherishing the moment and wanting to create a happy memory together, aware of the dangers that lie ahead. Later, Bok Soon arrives at the office, and Min Q immediately starts shooting at her as soon as the elevator doors open. Bok Soon remains calm, understanding that he is not yet serious about killing her. To her surprise, Min Q suggests having a drink together, claiming he already knows the outcome of their battle. Bok Soon contemplates numerous strategies in her mind, attempting different techniques to defeat Min Q, but she repeatedly falls short. During their conversation, Bok Soon discovers Min Q's vulnerability, his love for her, when she bravely confesses this realization. It momentarily distracts Min Q, giving her a chance to strike him down with a samurai sword. Before his death, Min Q reveals that he sent a tablet to Jae Yang, hinting that she might have witnessed the events through security cameras. 
filled with worry and fear. Bok soon rushes back home, dreading the thought of her daughter hating her. Fortunately, she finds Jae Yang peacefully asleep in her bed, indicating that Min Kyu might have been lying. When Jae Yang wakes up, she praises her mother for always working hard for their family, leaving Bok soon feeling guilty and uncertain if Jae Yang truly knows the truth. Later, the senator, whose son was killed, dies in his car from carbon monoxide poisoning, leading to suspicions that Bok Soon might be implicated. Meanwhile, Jae Yang is expelled from school but musters the courage to visit So Ra one last time in her classroom to bid farewell. She also meets Chiyo Wu's gaze, subtly reminding him of her unpredictable and potentially dangerous side by touching her neck. The atmosphere is tense, but Jae Yang, no longer afraid to be true to herself, decides to follow her heart. If you like my channel or enjoy watching me dance, please leave a comment in the comment section saying dance. Adam, 